We're at the Site C Summit. I'm talking to author, journalist, and contributing editor to the TAI, Andrew Nikiforik. Um, Andrew, why did the NDP decide to go ahead with Site C? That's a million dollar question um, because in doing so, they broke two big election promises. The first was that uh, reconciliation with First Nations would be a priority with this government. Um, by approving the dam and saying um, uh, there will be no reconciliation on this issue, uh, the government uh, directly broke a promise. The second promise they made was that they would, rather than proceed with this boondoggle, this twelve uh, or ten point seven billion dollar boondoggle, uh, they said they would look for power within the existing BC hydro system. So that means they would look for power from the Burrard Station, or power from the Columbia Treaty entitlement, or power from uh, by adding an additional turbine to the Revelstoke Dam. All three of those. Um, options would provide the province with the equivalence of three Site C dams at a fraction of the cost. Um, the government of John Horgan never even considered these options. Um, so what Premier Horgan has now done by going against the economic evidence, the ecological evidence, the issue of reconciliation with First Nations by breaking election promises, <clears throat> he has really um, signaled to the people of BC that uh, it's business as usual, democracy be damned. Was there anything in the BCUC report that would have persuaded someone such as Mr. Horgan to change his mind and go ahead with the dam when really the NDP had, we believe, opposed it for many years. Well, any, any rational reading of the BCUC brings you to the conclusion that this project is not needed, that this project is high risk, and that terminating the project is not going to cost you any more than trying to complete it. Um, uh, and furthermore, the BCUC also said there are cheaper alternatives available at lower unit costs per energy. The BCUC said all of that. They couldn't have, if they wanted to, um, they didn't have to scream, this project is bad news for the province, um, but they very quietly said that. And it's stunning to me that the uh, New Democrats would ignore all of that evidence. That tells me that they weren't interested in the evidence in the first place and that they'd already made up their mind to proceed with this down. Then I, I agree with you, but if that's the case, then was the whole thing, the opposition for these many years, was, was it always a sham? The new democratic opposition to this dam has always been um, uh, lukewarm. This was never really a big issue for them. Um, but they did state very clearly in their election platform that this mega project was a bad idea and that better alternatives for providing power already exist in the system. And they ignored their own election problem. Why is this issue so important for the future of BC? I mean, this, this issue touches every aspect of life in British Columbia, Jack. It is about water. It is about First Nations. It is about the destruction of farmland capable of feeding a million people. Um, it is about climate change. It is about uh, the need for encouraging cheaper alternatives to large mega projects. Um, it's about democracy. 
Um, and fundamentally, at the end of the day, it's really about how much people are going to pay for electricity in this province. And to proceed with an unneeded project for which there is no guaranteed market at this point in time means that if this project continues, each and every British Columbian is going to be experiencing a train wreck when they see their BC hydro bills go up and up and up. Um, and that's a train wreck for the general economy of the province as well. That's why this issue matters. And that's why so many people have decided that uh, they must exercise their responsibilities as citizens to prevent a government um, from going forward with a really bad decision that penalizes ordinary working British Columbians at the expense of, a rich, of enriching a few lawyers, engineers, and bankers for a project we do not need. As someone who's opposed to Site C, I noticed that the, the announcement to proceed was made on a Monday. By Thursday morning, this story was out of the news and has been gone ever since. Um, I don't know if you'd like to, but if you, if you would like to comment just on, on the role of the media in getting this project approved and then kind of not saying anything. Well, the media has done a very poor job of explaining to, to taxpayers how mega projects work. Um, and we know from studies at the business school at, at Oxford University, no less, that mega projects uh, don't work very well at all. They, uh, at nine out of ten times, these projects are over, bed, over budget, over time, uh, and, uh, and, and deliver very few of the promised benefits. And this process is, goes on over and over again because they are so large, they are unwieldy, they are open to corruption, and they are open to misinformation and deception. Um, and that's exactly what's happened with Site C. It's what happened with the Keesak uh, Dam in Manitoba. It's happened with the Muskrat Falls Dam in Newfoundland. The same pattern has been repeated over and over again. And who loses at the end of the day? It's always ratepayers and ordinary taxpayers. Um, and, um, you know, the, the media today, what's left of it, there's not much left of it, um, is not doing its job if it is not defending the public interest. This is a, this is a clear-cut case of where a government has decided to defy the public interest. Um, and, and, and when governments do that, it's really up to citizens to step in and say, no, no, you cannot do that. You are not representing us by, by taking the province down a really bad path. Last question. This has been presented as a, at least, being climate change friendly because it's hydropower. That's but that's bullshit. not really the case. No, it's pure bullshit. Um, uh, dams have never been climate friendly. <laughs> and how can you call a project that's going to flood arable land capable of feeding a million people, food security for this province, which we are likely going to need because of climate change, how can that possibly be green or clean? It is not. How, how can a, approving a project um, that, that threatens uh, people who live within Treaty 8, now this is the third dam that they have to, have to deal with, um, uh, and all uh, the two previous dams had, have changed their way of life, um, their treaty rights, access to their land, you name it. How, ca how can you call a dam that affects First Nations in that way clean or green? And, you know, the science is very clear about dams. They are contributors uh, to, to greenhouse gases. Um, we do have methane and CO2 uh, coming off the reservoirs because of all the rotten vegetation uh, that accumulates underneath them. That is very well uh, uh, demonstrated. So again, you know, politicians, when they want to hide something, when they want to deceive people, will refer to energy projects as clean and green when they are not. Would you just like to finish off with anything you'd like to... Well, I, I would like to encourage um, 
citizens of, of, of every class, citizens of every political stripe, to challenge the government on this project. This project is bad for the economy. It's bad for First Nations. It's bad for agriculture. It's bad for our future. It's bad for ratepayers. Um, and it, it's a train, it's a slow moving train wreck. And it's only opposition from citizens and First Nations that is going to stop this damn thing. So we need to get off our asses and we need to exercise our rights as citizens once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack.